The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Alejandro Giamatti Fahla, President of the Republic of Guatemala. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. Your Excellency, Mr. Abdul Shahid, President of the 76th Session of the General Assembly. Your Excellency, Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations Organization. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, heads of state and government. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, ministers of foreign affairs, distinguished delegates, Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is an honor to address this assembly for the first time on the occasion of the general debate of the 76th session of the United Nations General Assembly. I wish to express appreciation of the efforts of the 75th session president, Mr. Volkan Boskir, for having presided over this body in an exemplary manner during adverse circumstances of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'd also like to take this opportunity to congratulate the president of the current session, Mr. Abdullah Shahid, and reiterate our commitment to you and the Secretary General and the member states of this assembly in our efforts for the agenda for this session. The year 2020 presented us with unimaginable challenges for the entire world. Today, almost two years after the beginning of this pandemic, the global effort has resulted in the development and distribution of effective and safe vaccines. And yet, immunization of a critical mass of the world population is up against a number of different challenges, including new dangerous variants of the virus, unequal access to the vaccines, world competition, for a limited supply of doses, and those that have had access are the most powerful economies, forgetting that hoarding of vaccines could end up becoming a risk for themselves if we, the smallest and more poor nations, do not achieve the same level of immunization. Added to that, we see climate change buffeting the world exacerbating meteorological phenomenon, disastrous effects of which have led to the loss of human lives as well as damage to agriculture and infrastructure on a large scale. Given that, the international community needs to transform itself and demonstrate that multilateralism as well as international cooperation are effective in order to move forward. In this regard, Mr. President, I recognize the relevance of the topic that you chose to be the center of our deliberations, building resilience through hope to recover from COVID-19, rebuild sustainability, respond to the needs of the planet, respecting the rights of persons, and of course, revitalize the United Nations. Mr. President, despite the adverse conditions in which we are currently living, we have all demonstrated resilience. The pandemic has highlighted the enormous capacity of the human being to overcome hostile conditions and survive. I had just recently assumed administration of my country when we started to grapple with the pandemic of COVID-19, which has impacted us and thousands of Guatemalan citizens, causing a strong impact on the economy, modifying social and cultural dynamics. And it has made it necessary to respond to the pandemic according to our possibilities and to put in place priority action to address the most urgent needs. I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to all those friend countries and international organizations that in recent months have provided us with unconditional assistance to strengthen our massive campaign to vaccinate the Guatemalan people. And to this we must add the efforts of countries with special emphasis on people, their environment, and the media for full development, comprehensive development, highlighting 
the following, the right to health and life of all people. My government established as a priority for public policy the protection of life from conception on and institutionalization of the family to bring together the efforts of the state to guarantee full observance of fundamental rights and attention to the most immediate needs from the moment of conception until senior citizenship through various social programs, healthcare programs, education, all geared to fulfilling the human development necessities of the country. Second, conservation of the environment. Guatemala is acknowledged as one of the countries which experiences the greatest risk and vulnerability at a world level because of climate events. Despite this, we continue to recover from the damage caused by natural disasters, which has compelled us to undertake efforts to rehabilitate services and public infrastructure, as well as fishing and agricultural production. We have had to attend to the needs of entire communities. Such was the case of hurricanes Eta and Iota, which impacted us severely in the period of 15 days, one after the other. It's important to undertake action geared to recovery, along with cooperation and assistance from friend nations. Turning to energy, despite the pandemic, Guatemala has been impacted by a constant increase in the price of fuel, and which is why we are implementing policies that promote the use of renewable energy sources and transition fuels such as natural gas for the development of productive activity in the country. This will then produce a reduction of our dependency on international prices, which is tangible support to achieving SDG 7 using only non-polluting energy that would contribute to mitigating the effects of climate change by decreasing greenhouse gas emissions. Also, we have been able to increase the amount of the population or proportion that has access to electricity, reaching some 93.5 percent, benefiting both urban and rural areas. Turning now to the fight to eradicate hunger and bring about food and nutritional security. The pandemic led to huge human losses and has compromised and affected our food systems. We continue to advance with our great national crusade for nutrition. And we've implemented programs to support Guatemalan families, such as Fortified Complementary Food, which has distributed some 2,491 metric tons throughout the territory, especially to children between the ages of six months and five years of age. Some 32,000 family vegetable gardens and school gardens have been established to allow families to grow their own food and trade the excess. We've provided food support to 1,194,000 families through various programs of food assistance, and we're working with organizations for productive families to generate quality food sustainably. At the end of 2021, we hope to create a trade flow of some $45 million in sales that would come from family farms and contribute to the school food system of the Ministry of Education. Turning now to protecting the migrant population, Guatemala is no stranger to the migratory crisis. And we would like to express and have expressed our concern with inappropriate messages and contradictory messages which are leveraged by <clears throat> trafficking and human trafficking networks to drive forward irregular migration, especially those that come from the highest level of government. In this regard, the only solution to stop irregular migration would be to build a wall of prosperity that would allow the human being to improve living conditions in their own countries and stop going to destination countries and they need to in turn increase investment, foreign direct investment in our countries to improve access to our products and the access to the markets. Turning now to reactivation and economic growth and recovery, despite the impact of COVID-19, various natural phenomena have also had an impact and despite all this we've managed to have a stable economy with growth exceeding 4% of GDP and according to the information of the Bank of Guatemala. Due to these efforts, Guatemala has become one of the best destinations for international investment, attracting some $851 million in direct foreign investment, with more than 55 projects on the ground being financed, creating more than 14,000 formal jobs for Guatemalan people. 
and over $7.7 billion in exports, which is an increase of 20.8% compared to July 2020. As a government, we work very hard to increase sources of jobs, increase foreign investment and develop trade to strengthen micro, small and medium-sized companies to reduce poverty levels. Through the White Stamp campaign to combat poverty, we are promoting the products of small Guatemalan producers, raising awareness of consumers that if they export products from rural areas directly to international markets in a direct manner without intermediaries, they can create greater income. I take this space then to invite friend nations to become aware of this program and to contribute to small producers who are participating in this initiative, opening up new markets in a more effective man manner of trade and thus reducing poverty levels. Turning to security now, Central American region is grappling with the fight against transnational organized crime, especially with regard to the phenomenon of drug trafficking. We have undertaken action in coordination with various bodies specialized from this organization, as well as working with friendly nations to whom I wish to express my gratitude for their goodwill so that we can work together against this scourge. However, our region continues to suffer from a tremendous scourge which has cost many lives, innumerable lives, and which corrupts our societies and has a great impact on our economy and which compels us to drain resources to fight the scourge, those resources which could have been used to improve our human development and disease and enhance human development. And here I refer to drug trafficking. This is an evil which causes suffering due to a demand that exists for its consumptions, especially here in the United States of America, there is this demand. And yet in recent months, we have seen how it is going. Venezuela, with 95% of all the planes that come to our country or neighboring countries and from where they then transfer the drugs to this country. That is why we have, with great responsibility, assumed the fight against this evil. And this is a demonstration of the fact that since our be the beginning of our administration to date, we have managed to break up some 15 drug trafficking rings and destabilize six. 2,855 people related to this crime have been confirmed, 52 of which are subject to a process of extradition for drug trafficking and seven for crimes committed in other countries. We have seized 19,953 kilos of cocaine, 7,000 pounds of marijuana. We've destroyed 1,565,000 pounds cocaine plants, over 4,299,000 marijuana plants, and some 25,929,000 opium poppy plants. Yesterday, we had experienced 114 days without the landing of any illegal planes bringing illicit substances to our territory, which shows the longest period of that and shows our commitment in fighting drug trafficking. With regard to the maritime trafficking of drugs and illicit substances, according to international agencies, we have brought about a noteworthy reduction in the transit of these substances in territorial waters of the Pacific, and this is due to the ongoing presence of the Naval Special Forces. However, it is also worth noting that those successes don't seem to be recognized or valued by the consuming countries who have the greatest responsibility in this insane chain of drug trafficking. And that is why today, from here, I am demanding that there be more effectiveness in those countries to combat money laundering, that they do more to repatriate the capital that fled due to drug trafficking, because as paradoxical as it might seem, the money ends up in the bank accounts of the consuming countries from drug trafficking. Mr. President, Guatemala has been slammed by the impact of climate change. And given this harsh reality in this very assembly, I come to request as the pro temporary president of SICA, the Central American system, that our region 
be recognized as a highly vulnerable region, vulnerable to the impact of loss and damage due to natural disasters, and the need for flexible and quality financing. Also, I stand here to request the granting access of secure parameters that would enable us to rebuild our infrastructure that we are compelled to do year after year. This is a call for comprehension and solidarity with the industrialized countries who are largely responsible for climate change, the consequences of which have a negative impact on our region where we only contribute with 0.4% of all greenhouse gases. And yet, our region contributes to the absorption of greenhouse gases due to our forests. The disastrous effects could be mitigated if we had collaboration and contributions from those countries, which could then translate into a social compensation that would clearly reflect then in an improvement of human development. Rest assured that we will shine a bright light on this vulnerability with concrete action during the 26th Conference of the Parties of the UNFCCC on climate change. It's important also to revitalize the United Nations, Mr. President, so that it can adapt to the world reality. Be for this, it is imperative that maintaining international peace and securities continue to be their main goals. And to that end, the Security Council must honor its responsibility without ideological bias. And I invite the Security Council to be more objective and more equitable. Guatemala is honored in having a long history as a true contributing country to this organization. Today, once again, we call on the Security Council to act in a manner which is consistent with its function and role, including the responsible use of the veto and avoid a worsening of international crises. Moreover, I firmly believe that reforming the United Nations continues to be a pending issue. And this is why we reiterate the need to continue with support through funds and programs of this organization that would be geared to the most needy of people and specifically invest in processes that are tangible for the development of these most needy people. I also believe, Mr. President, that Taiwan can provide experience, capacity, and know-how for the strengthening of multilateralism, taking into account the challenges that we currently face. We wish every success to the Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, in his second term, and we urge him to reform and modernize this organization. That should be his priority. It's a pleasure to indicate here that during this first year of Guatemala's membership in the Economic and Social Council, follow-up has been provided for the Sustainable Development Agenda, bringing about coordination of joint efforts to make the work of this body more effective under the slogan, Inclusive Development for All, considering it the very center where all efforts would converge in order to bring about conditions that would create development that we all so desire. Guatemala, as a country with a peaceful vocation, reiterates before this assembly the need for complete, irreversible, and transparent disarmament. And we condemn any nuclear testing or any threat of the use of force with this type of weapon that might truly put at risk the continuity of life on our planet. Ladies and gentlemen, we reiterate that the International Court of Justice plays a vital role as the main judicial body of the United Nations, and we reaffirm our commitment to resolve in a permanent and definitive manner before this court the territorial and maritime and island dispute with Belize, a country with whom we would like to have a privileged relationship in order to peacefully resolve common problems. Before concluding, despite the hard hit for us of this pandemic, and still at a moment of pain, my country commemorates the bicentennial of our independence. It has been a difficult path with challenges 
that we have grappled with as best as possible. But we must see this event as a watershed in history and assume the challenge of grappling with decades of lost ground, which can be seen in high indices of poverty, malnutrition, an obsolete healthcare system, and an urgent need for educational reform to decrease the digital gap and ensure the excellency of public education. 200 years later, we are clear that the future requires greater integration, greater participation, growth, and the efforts of all, one and all, in a manner and in areas that define the international agenda in the most recent decade to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals so that we can be saved. We must not forget that this will only be possible only if we understand the urgent need of creating a world where equity will be tangible and where the aspiration of a human being to improve living standards is brought about as the result of solidarity of the most developed country standing in solidarity with the least favored without condition, pressure, or any attempt to violate the sovereignty of these countries in exchange for support, help, or cooperation. We must understand that we cannot overcome the challenges of those that inhabit this planet if we don't assimilate the fact that assistance, cooperation, and interaction amongst nations needs to be effective, dynamic, and sustainable, but never subject to an element that would put at risk the principle of self-determination of peoples and the respect of democracy. As is true for non-intervention in the internal affairs of other countries. Many of the small nations like ours need the understanding that achieving a developed world means allowing and sharing fairer trade and that a cordial, fraternal, and friendly hand be expend extended to those who have less. May God bless you. Thank you. And may God bless Guatemala. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Guatemala for the statement just made. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I request protocol to escort His Excellency.